Australian agriculture is under siege by Anthony Albanese. So too is your food security. So too is your cost of living because he's driving up your food prices because of this assault on Australian farmers. Everyone mocked Australia for what looked like one of the strangest farming moves ever. Flooding fields with millions of crayfish. The images went viral. Jokes piled up. People around the world couldn't stop laughing at the idea of yabbies taking over farmland. It seemed like a classic only in Australia moment. But then something unexpected happened. As the months passed, those same paddocks started drawing attention for a very different reason. Crawfish farmers around Acadiana are getting ready for their next harvest. And as our Kendria LaFleur explains, farmers are hopeful that this year's crop will be better than last year's. Farmers who were struggling suddenly had a new income source. And what started as a joke was starting to look like a smart move. But was it really a planned strategy or just a fluke of nature? And did Australia actually move crayfish into rice fields? Crayfish saves Australian farmers. A little while back, parts of Australia were hit with a disaster one-two punch. First came the droughts, long dry months that turned rich farmland into cracked dirt. Crops withered, dams dried up, and families that had farmed the land for generations were left struggling to survive. And just when everyone thought things couldn't get worse, the skies opened. Heavy rain turned empty paddocks into shallow lakes. Entire harvests were wiped out in hours. For many farmers, it felt like Mother Nature had flipped a coin, and they lost both sides. But then, something strange started happening. Out in the flooded fields, something was moving. It wasn't more bad news, at least not for everyone. It was yabbies. If you've never heard the word before, they're basically Australia's version of freshwater crayfish. Small, clawed creatures that usually live in dams, creeks, and ponds. But after the floods, they started popping up everywhere. In places where farmers used to grow grain or veggies, yabbies were crawling through the shallow water like they owned the place. At first, people laughed it off. Social media had a field day. Only in Australia would a flood turn your crops into a crayfish farm. And honestly, it looked wild. But some farmers stopped laughing when they realized they had something valuable right under their boots. These weren't pests. They were products. And with so much demand from overseas, especially from fancy seafood markets in places like Singapore and Hong Kong, suddenly a soggy paddock full of yabbies didn't seem like such a bad thing. One farmer said the flood water had barely settled before they started pulling in hundreds of yabbies a day. For folks who lost everything else, this unexpected harvest became a lifeline. Some even said they made more from selling yabbies than they ever did from their usual crops. It wasn't that they planned this. Nature just handed them a new business model, and the more they leaned into it, the more serious it got. People started building basic holding tanks. Local shops began stocking yabby traps. Exporters started calling. It went from weird to legit in a matter of weeks. And this wasn't just some one-off story from a single town. In central Victoria, an indigenous-led project decided to go all in. The Jaja Wurrung Group launched an ambitious plan to turn an 80-hectare former dairy farm into a full-scale yabby operation. They weren't just catching what nature handed them. They were building ponds, restoring wetlands, and turning crayfish into culture, economy, and future security all at once. So yeah, it wasn't some official government operation where millions of crayfish were loaded onto trucks and dumped into farmlands. But in a strange way, it sort of happened anyway. Floodwaters did what no policy ever could. They forced the land to change. They gave farmers something they didn't ask for, but something some of them now depend on. And in the middle of all the chaos, Australia ended up with fields that weren't full of grain or hay, but alive with thousands of yabbies. While Australia was stumbling into this by accident, other countries were doing it on purpose. China even flooded its rice paddies with millions of crayfish, on purpose, and the results shocked everyone. China's Crayfish Gamble The story of China's crayfish rice revolution starts with a simple idea. Why plant only rice when the same flooded field can grow two crops at once? This clever system is officially known as CRISP, which stands for crayfish, Rice Integrated System of Production, and it has reshaped farming across China. Farmers flood their rice paddies with shallow water 
and build narrow ditches along the edges. As rice grows, crayfish thrive in the watery channels. The crayfish eat pests and leftover rice straw. Their waste fertilizes the plants, and under the right conditions, you can harvest crayfish before rice. Suddenly, a field is producing grain and seafood at the same time. You see, Fields once used only for rice are now buzzing with crayfish nests and stocking densities of up to two tons of crayfish per hectare. Rice yields have jumped too, going from eight to 10 tons per hectare, which is a solid bump considering minimal extra effort. But the real twist lies in the numbers. Crayfish fetch $2,000 to $3,000 per ton, while rice sells for only $400 to $700 per ton. That profit gap translates to thousands more dollars per hectare each season. Beyond cash, the system offers real ecological benefits. Without heavy chemical use, crayfish reduce the need for pesticides and fertilizers. Their natural feeding routines keep pests under control and recycle organic matter back into the soil. Rice fields see less weed growth, microbial activity increases, and methane emissions drop, making the system more climate friendly. One researcher in Jiangsu province noted Chinese crayfish rice farms significantly improved water quality and lowered use of chemicals. It has not all been smooth sailing. Some farmers aiming for crayfish profit densified stocking too much or flooded incorrectly. Over time, rice yields declined in certain provinces like Zhejiang where burrowing crayfish disrupted the soil. In response, researchers and local authorities launched programs to train farmers on rice crayfish techniques balancing crayfish density, rice variety selection, and ditch placement. Agricultural extension departments in areas like Hongzhe Lake actively guide farmers on irrigation schedules, fertilizer timing, rice cultivar choices, and crayfish stocking ratios. Despite occasional hiccups, the system has exploded across China. CRISP now covers over 1 million hectares, 10 times its size in 2007. Today, China farms more crayfish than the rest of the world combined. United Nations and other studies confirm that rice crayfish integrated systems bring higher yields and lower environmental impact. Farmers often describe the transformation in their life stories. One crayfish farmer said that before crisp, a rice harvest was a gamble against pests and market prices. Now, even if the rice harvest fails, the crayfish can cushion the loss or even make the year profitable. The system is becoming a community norm, not a quirky experiment. Villages share equipment for ditch digging and holding tanks. Traders collect crayfish daily by motorbike. Processing and cold storage facilities are expanding, shifting crayfish from a backyard operation to a scalable industry. Even environmental groups are praising it. A farm in Jiangsu recently won certification from the Aquaculture Stewardship Council for sustainable crayfish rice farming. They design systems that reduce water and chemical use, protect soil structure and support wildlife, all within the footprint of existing rice paddies. This certification adds international credibility to the Chinese model and opens export channels. Around the world, watchers are paying attention. U.S. rice regions in Louisiana and Mississippi have practiced small-scale rice crayfish rotation for years, but it never scaled the way Chinese farmers did. The Chinese success story is pushing scientists and farmers in the U.S. to study how far the system could go under different climates and regulations. So far, researchers see increased pest control, better soil health, and extra income potential. That's where China stands today. What started as a practical idea to flood rice fields wisely grew into a co-farming revolution. Crayfish are not a fluke. They are an ecological ally and economic backup in a changing world. And while no formal end is in sight, crank up the heat on China's crayfish rice fields because the next harvest season always holds surprises. With the surprise success drawing global attention, Australia is starting to ask the same question. What if rice fields could do more? Could yabbies and rice work in Australia? Major floods might have accidentally brought yabbies to the Australian fields. But despite the buzz, there hasn't been any structured farming of yabbies and rice paddies. No coordinated effort to release crayfish into flooded fields. So yeah, it wasn't a strategy like China. It was nature doing its thing. And while the headlines might have exaggerated, the potential hiding in that chaos is now a topic of real interest. Australia never engineered a crayfish rice system, 
but it might be time to consider doing just that. In China, co-farming crayfish with rice has become an agricultural powerhouse. Farmers dig small ditches around their patties and introduce red swamp crayfish. It's a profitable, low-impact system that now spans more than a million hectares across China. Many of these farms export live crayfish around the world, with demand especially high in Asia's seafood markets. Australia's yabby farms, on the other hand, are still largely based on traditional pond setups. Farmers raise yabbies in farm dams, using traps to harvest them for local and overseas markets. It works, and the industry is growing, but it doesn't yet involve rice. And yet, the idea isn't far-fetched. Australia already has rice-growing regions in New South Wales and Victoria. The infrastructure exists. The water systems exist. What's missing is the integration, the intentional co-cultivation of two very compatible species. The advantages are clear. Integrating yabbies into rice production could boost income per hectare, reduce chemical use, and make better use of water during unpredictable weather. Yabbies feed on decaying plant material and small aquatic pests, which means they could reduce the need for herbicides and insecticides. That would not only cut costs for farmers, but also lessen the environmental impact of rice production. And unlike chemical treatments, yabbies can be harvested and sold, turning pest control into profit. There's also a cultural angle. Indigenous communities in Australia have deep connections with yabbies and freshwater ecosystems, Projects like the Jaja Ja, ja Wurung's Yabby Farm in central Victoria are already proving that combining traditional knowledge with modern aquaculture can create jobs, restore wetlands, and promote food sovereignty. Scaling up those kinds of efforts, especially in rice-growing regions, could create a powerful mix of environmental care, economic return, and community development. Of course, this isn't a plug-and-play system. There would be questions about burrowing behavior, the timing of harvests, and water quality management. China's system works in part because of its long flood seasons and adapted rice varieties. Australia would need research trials to test compatibility. Can existing rice systems support yabbies without affecting yields? Would modified irrigation designs be needed? Would crayfish damage field structures? These are technical challenges, not roadblocks. With government support and agricultural research, those answers could come quickly. Processing and export also need to be considered. As yabby demand grows overseas, especially in markets like Singapore and Hong Kong, having a reliable supply chain becomes critical. Cold storage, transport logistics, and quality control would all have to scale up to handle integrated crayfish rice systems. That's an investment, but one that could pay off for both regional farmers and national exporters. So while no one in Australia dumped yabbies into rice paddies on purpose, the unexpected boom after the floods might be a signal worth paying attention to. It revealed an untapped synergy, one where rice fields don't just grow grain but also become productive, living water farms. With the right approach, Australia could take what started as a fluke and turn it into one of its most sustainable and profitable farming evolutions. Yabbies might not be crawling through rice fields just yet, but the potential is undeniable. If Australia takes the leap, it could redefine farming in a big way. But what do you think? Should Australia embrace crayfish rice farming, or is it too risky to try? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you want to see more stories like this, hit subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.